Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now. Take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. Take it from the Iron Woman, we only have special guests. And today I'm really honored to get to know Louisa a little more. Louisa is from France, so we figured out we have a few things in common. You and I, we both grew up in a town with a castle. It's already something special. And we both went to an all-girls school. We've been living in New York City. And I have to say, I love anything art. So we just want to hear from you. Louisa, tell us a little bit, how did it all start in this beautiful town with a castle in an all-girls school? Okay, so hi, Suzanne. Thank you for inviting me first. Thank you. I'm really pleased to participate to your show, to podcast. I'm from the countryside, which is in Lorraine, northeast of France, where they used to have a castle or a chateau Pierre de Bar. And when I was young, I always wanted to be an archaeologist. I love trying to find treasures. That was my passion. <laughs> I was going to a girl's school, as you said, and it was very strict. And when I was six years old, I won a competition, a jury over there from the World's World Health Organization. I was feeling really proud in a way to have this contest, won this contest. I didn't take any notice of that because I was a child, I was six, and my life was continuing. I love drawing, I love the nature, I love spending time outside, playing the forest, playing with the mud. So I was really creative, really a dreamer as well. This started early on and you were able to fulfill your dream in a way. And fast forward, you moved to New York. And I was really intrigued when you told me about 2019 Women Empowerment Exhibit. So New Yorker with an H. Tell us a little bit about that. As I say, when I was young, I always loved being a storyteller because I loved talking about story to my sisters and for hours. In 2019, I came to New York 10 years ago. It wasn't easy. I've been through different experiences and I decided to go back to school at the Art Student League, which is an iconic school where amazing artists like Pollock, Benton, Miss Bourgeois, the Koenig Kander went there. I'm a part of this world <laughs> And later on, I decided to go through galleries and it was really hard when I feel a little bit rejected. So I decided to, to change my way. And I said one day, I woke up and I had an epiphany and I said, oh, maybe I should create my own project without knowing how to do it. I said, okay, let's try to think about it. And I was really inspired by my mother because she was an illiterate woman. She never had a chance to go to school. But when she was 72 or 70, she decided to, to go back to school and to learn how to read and how to write. It was my inspiration. After that, I saw her going to different schools and talking to kids that talking about education was so important. In 2019, I decided to create it, New York Her with an edge featuring women from the diversity from New York. I wanted to do like kind of woman empowerment with inclusion and talking about their own story because I'm a storyteller and using augmented reality inside the Canva, you could see their own portrait. It's kind of telling them what they've been doing from scratch and becoming an entrepreneur. They were really powerful and they were inspiring other women and the new generation. So that's why how I ended up creating this project. We end up at Art House Hotel, which is on the Upper West Side on 77 and Broadway. I had a panel discussions, people were there. I, it was a great experience. How do you become an entrepreneur and selling yourself with a beautiful art? 
this is start when I was at the Arsenal League. I saw a lot of artists who were really desperate, really unhappy about. They didn't know how to sell their art. And not only selling, they didn't want to show their art, but art should be shown even to your neighbor or to people on the street. Or I noticed something was a little bit wrong. And I don't know why I said, and I had a chance. I was really supported by a great mentor because being three months after being at the art student league, I did a contest and I won a competition from the jury over there, from the gallery. And one of my mentors, his name was Charles Inman, amazing man, very well-known artist. He told me, Louisa, you shouldn't be here. You should go outside and find yourself far away, not only in New York. You need because you deserve it. He said to me, you're an artist, you have to accept it. Thanks to him because he really had me to accept the way how I was. So it was kind of, I was doing my coming out. After that, I went through galleries. And as I said, I feel some rejection. That's normal because it's not easy because the art world is pretty opaque and you have to get to, to be connected with galleries. If you don't know anyone, it's really hard. And especially as well, at this time, even when you're a woman, it's not easy. Some galleries said, we prefer to have a man. It happens, but I don't want to globalize. It happens once. I came home and I said, what should I do? Should I give it up? I found my strength and I said, no, I will think about my mom. She did something. So I want to be inspired by her. So the following morning I had an epiphany and I said, oh, I want to make my new project with my husband had me. And he said, yeah, but you're not an entrepreneur. And I said, of course, I'm going to learn. That was the only way to, to, to do something. It took time. I created New Yorker featuring this wonderful woman with finding the space. I was very really supported by an amazing company called Jesse Deco, who allows me to have prints all over Manhattan. I had the chance to make a collaboration with a hotel where I went there. The name of the hotel is Alphonse Hotel. So that's how I decided to understand that I didn't know I could have some impact with this woman because I didn't realize that as an artist, just simple artist, trying to to gather hundreds of people in a hotel and doing panel discussion and showing them the light. That's what I love. And what I love as well is all this painting with their own portrait were on inspiring the new generation. I even saw a little girl was maybe 12 years old. She cried in front of the painting because she said, I recognize myself and now I have some hope. When you see the impact, an art project can make it, I realize I'm using my art as a person, as a Louisa L. <laughs> Louisa L. I love this. I also like all the L's. It's lifelong learning. It's about being curious, being a storyteller, an archaeologist, but then also you're an art entrepreneur. I like all those descriptions that you have. But now tell us a little bit about Terra Futura. This sounds like very intriguing to me. I used to work for the United Nations, a Swiss mission to the United Nations. So obviously United Nations is dear to my heart. Yes, when the COVID hit, I was feeling a little bit sad because my New Yorker were, were doing some tour in Cleveland and Dallas and people were asking me for some uh, prints, etc. And during COVID, when I was watching from the outside world that people needed really the nature that reminds my roots where I'm coming from. So the countryside, I knew how to dig the earth as well. I, I needed to do something regarding the nature and but I didn't know how until one day I Google on the website and I noticed there was a project about the 17 sustainable development goals from the United Nations who started in 2014. They did a mark like until 2030, but of course this project should be for life because mm -hmm. with a 17th subject, I had a good idea. I would love to create 17 paintings and in each painting, I will feature the new generation of kids. It could be from kindergarten to high school to college even adults who love to say their voice because i love using my art as a media 
And I notice it's a real sociological project because when you see the impact of art, and I love tradition and modernity, okay, this time I wanted to use it, my project, not with augmented reality, but with a QR code. So it's direct because time is really important today. Using QR code was really fast. I created Terra Futura in 20 years. Yes, maybe 2020, something like that. I started to draw from scratch. I, it was a really long journey to think about how I'm going to make this, this canvas because it takes time to think about one painting, especially the subject who are really, who is really meaningful. And I use, for instance, how to stop hunger. And so I needed really to be inspired by what I learned with my style. And I'm a really good colorist. I love colors. I wanted to bring all my energy to people because my mission, as since I'm young, I always wanted to make people happy. And through my colors, and especially bringing light to others, changing the mindset, why not? And the only people I wanted to feature was kids who had the chance to have a message so they can, we need to talk, to let kids talking because they, they're the first who can inspire their own generation and the old generation as well. I started painting 17 paintings and when I finished it, how I'm going to do it? I went back to my hometown. I didn't know. I, I just wanted to find a small space. Uh, I had a chance to see the, the mayor there and it was so nice. He said, oh, I want you to be featured in our cultural center. I became a kind of ambassador of my town. It was absolutely stunning. I didn't know. I didn't have a clue how it will end up. October 22, I had a chance to picture my 17 painting. It wasn't the original, but the print. I sent all the 17 print there. They did an amazing display. I didn't realize there were like news and local news and people. In my hometown, it's a really small town, over 150 people who came. It was kind of, I don't know if about the movie, Cinema Paradiso, as the same experience as. New York for Terra Futura, people wanted to gather. I realized people needed community to see out, to be happy. To ha so it was an amazing experience. That's how it starts. During this event, there was a teacher who was there and she said, oh, she came with kids, like five kids. And she said, oh, we love your project. We're dealing with sustainability and a program and a, we want to... We would love to have your project to make our kids working together and using your art for the end of the year, state taste, Salo Royale. And I said, wow, of course. And she said, oh, but we don't have sufficient means to pay for a bus to go to a museum, which is far away from where I'm from. Let's do it. Make it as a tour. <laughs> <laughs> and so the project has been on a tour for one year from all my region in Lorraine and end up in September, 20, 20th of September, 23, to outside of Paris, not far away in Seoul. I was in the town hall of the beautiful place. The project was on a tour in France, but I live in New York. I have to show this. That's how I end up for us day in 23 in one of the high school in New York. So I feature my original of my painting there just for the earth day congratulations and i love when you start it says terra futura means like the future of the earth it's not only the future of the earth of course if the earth talking about the planet i always talk about planets it's more it's of course it's a terra futura but it's still the present the action should be the present for the future but the bad. That's why it wasn't easy to find this name, but it was really, it's really good to hear that we are dealing with education and people, the planet and the world in a way, talking with 17 subjects. Hmm. That's why I call this project is a kind of sociological project. Every company in a different world can study this project. And that's why I decided to make it as a movement. When I receive all the messages from kids from New York, Washington, D.C., Africa, France, maybe India, and we're from 
Burkina Faso, maybe. <laughs> Somebody yesterday wants me to. It's really, I'm really happy to do that. I'm really happy because I'm still an artist, but I'm an artist as an art entrepreneur and using my art for projects to make impact. This is fantastic. Let's follow this movement and let's be part of the movement. What do yeah. you do to, to relax or can you yeah. relax? People will, will listen to me. They have to understand when you're an artist, it's not easy job. It's not a, the, the easily simple job. Of course, I have my family, but I would say I always try to be avant-gardist, but in thinking about I didn't only create the Africa or New Yorker. I created already 10 pieces of women from the, all over the world. I already love drawing since 2017. I'm doing like a golden series I'm using gold because gold. My name means God, means precious, and life is precious. Everything is connected with light. That's why I love to think about light. When I decided I was working, I'm, I'm really lucky to be part of Art House Hotel because on Saturday, like for instance, I need to work, of course, because being an artist, I need to do my own promotion, selling my art to support my project. I'm supported by a foundation called Creative Vision. People want to buy. It. I try to be busy as I can doing events like the one I did at Roma Hotel for Women's Month. I had a chance to be like two months ago to Indiana where I was going to do like a, a live drawing and an event about from the African American Foundations who are amazing. There were more than 350 people there. I created a couple of drawings for all the people who supported the foundation who helped to raise money for people in need or for women who are alone or for kids who don't have parents or do have community and the African uh, American as well. And I'm really happy as well. I'm working now for, for the future in a way. And I'm really happy to say from November to February 25th, so Terra Futura will be exhibited in, since in one of the contemporary museums in Ohio. It shows that there's hope for Terra Futura. And, and of course, I'm still always active trying to find connection and engagement with the school community. When I will be in the museum, I will find schools, community, and I'm really excited for that. So to see all the kids will be engaged, talking as well to people who will be finding something for late September during Climate Week. Because I was in France for Climate Week for with my 17th project, it was already done. If anyone who knows about, I don't know, sponsorship or, or maybe the UN, I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, to find a slot for, for Terra Futura during Climate Week, that would be amazing as well. Thank you so much for a glimpse into your life. Thank you. What are you taking away from this conversation? Terra Futura. We're all part of this movement. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday. Don't miss out. Come and join. Ask questions. Learn with people. Create a movement. And also get the book, Take it from the Iron Woman, Global Business Coaching with Sports Parallels. Download it or get it in your local bookstore. Shop local. Support women-owned companies. 